Jeff Koons' puppy in 1995 was really a memorable undertaking. I have so many memories, I don't know how many minutes it will take to, to cover it. And interestingly, just like the Rep Coast, I didn't see Jeff's works, and especially the puppy, in real life. I only saw photographs. To coincide with a documenta exhibition in Cassel, in a nearby town, Arolsen, Jeff Koons erected a wooden puppy, the same size as the steel structure that we built, and was a temporary sculpture that after it was shown had to be dismantled and destroyed. I found it really intriguing. I knew both the New York and the London dealers of Jeff Koons, and I said to them, I'm really interested in bringing that to Australia. And they both said, don't touch it. Don't even go near it. It cost us hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars even to build this one. And it was a nightmare. We don't want to get involved with it. But I said, I really would like to investigate it. And I said, OK, here is Jeff Kuhn's details. You go and talk to him. And I haven't met Jeff before. So next time I was in New York, I gave him a call. And I went to see him in his studio on corner of Broadway and Houston Street, so in Soho. Jeff was very friendly and said he's flattered that I want to bring the puppy to Australia. But he himself tried to build it in America in a foundry upstate New York, and he spent $300,000 then, and they didn't get anywhere. But he said, if I really want to try, well, here's my blessings. The puppy was based on a Jeff Kuhn sculpture called the White Terrier, carving which actually Jeff didn't do, but he commissioned it from very skilled German woodcarvers. But it was his work of art, which I bought from Jeff for almost no money. So I brought the puppy back to Australia, and that's where it really began. I was introduced to Australian engineer Doug Knox. And I said, well, this is the model, and we want to build it three-story high, and we want it covered in flowers. And he didn't look at me and say, you're crazy, John. He said, well, let's see what we can do. And it was the early days of computers, but he had the idea to do a plaster cast of the wooden sculpture, and with laser, dissected both horizontally and vertically, and he used the computer to blow it up so it became a three-story high, with exactly the same contours as the wooden puppy. So Doug succeeded in working out the method how to build it. The other thing was then to build it. Fortunately, I got the support of a couple of big industrial companies. There was a steel foundry near Penris, and it took almost a year to build it. The components came in layers of about probably a meter high and could be screwed together on site. At that time, I was very involved with the MCA, and it was logical to put it in this most prominent spot in front of the MCA. But before that, a lot of work had to be done in excavating the site so that we could put in concrete foundations. And it took, I believe, a couple of months just the assembling on site of the different components. It went all very smoothly, and we kept informing Jeff of the progress and he was very pleased. A steel netting was placed with compartments to put the little pots of flour into each of the openings. 
and we had support from nursery and art school helped to plant the flowers. We were really fortunate. It went without any major hitch. Jeff came out towards the end to add the finishing touches. He changed the layout of the flowers to make sure that there were shadows and contours that were highlighted by the different colors of the flowers. It turned out to be one of our most significant projects and one that made everybody happy. Jeff Koons said the puppy reflects joy, happiness, innocence, that it's all about love. And he was very correct because people couldn't have passed that puppy without looking at it admiringly and smiling. It made everybody happy to see it. It was in front of the MCA Circular Quay from early December till March. And because of its success, the Guggenheim, which was just ready to open its satellite museum in Bilbao, was negotiating with the cultural department of the European Union and a big German company, Hugo Boss, to buy it. They asked us, could we ship it to Bilbao? And we said yes, because we never buy any of the artworks or, or projects. The artist owns the work. But each section was already packed into containers and we were ready to put it on a ship. But the funding wasn't secure and I was on the phone almost daily with the Guggenheim in New York. If we don't ship it now, you'll miss the opening. I said, well, we can't. Then we went from shipping it by boat to getting a big cargo plane to take it, which of course was much more expensive, but still no decision. And at the last minute, they got the funding, but then the only thing we could do is ship it by commercial rates, I think on Singapore Airlines. And shipping the puppet to Bilbao, I think cost almost as much as building it here in Australia. It still makes wonderful memories. And I'm most grateful for Jeff Koons for having the face in us and letting us do it. <laughs>